Hey there, welcome to Main Street Living. I am Cheryl Nelson. Hey, it's your proud Navy veteran, Quincy Carr. Yes, and I'm Danielle Avari, who's very thankful for Quincy Carr and all of our veterans. Absolutely. Quincy, thank you for your service and all our viewers. Thank you as well. And to the spouses, families, everyone involved, we appreciate your sacrifice. A lot goes into that, right, Quincy? Oh, it does. It does. Uh, it definitely is a sacrifice, especially if you're a spouse, um, you know, and, and, and if you, you have a family and you got to, you know, so it's just a lot that goes into it. So um, when you dedicate yourself and when you put your hand on the Bible and when you swear, solemnly swear to, you know, I'll protect and serve, it is something that is a full commitment. So, um, you know, unfortunately, I got out a little bit earlier than I expected to, but everything that I've been able to do since I've been out um, was because I was able to serve. So, um, you know, I always tell other veterans, if you're upset at the military, you didn't take advantage of what the military provided for you. So. Aww, absolutely. absolutely. Quincy, do you have any stand up bits about the military, your time in the military? Does that feed oh, yeah, into your comedy all at all? Of, all types of stuff. Uh, you probably can see it online, but yeah, I, I talk about my experience with the VA, but like, here's like one picture of me when I was in boot camp. I had the baby smooth face. You see that? Oh, <laughs> yeah. That so one. Looking young. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then this one here, this is when I was uh, getting going from E3 to E4 uh, oh. and the captain was giving me my, my certificate. So uh, yeah, just a lot of memories. And um, it's like I said, for all the people that still serving and, uh, you know, I truly salute y'all. Yeah, yeah absolutely. we're going to be celebrating a lot of Veterans Day on the show, right, Quincy? Absolutely. Uh, we're helping veterans heal with uh, specially trained pets and amazing arts as well. Yeah. And we're also, if you're going to go back to the office, we're talking about tips to ease your pet's anxiety. And if you're looking for a new job on the road, we have the perfect suggestion. That's right. We'll get you back in the theater with the Arizona Opera, but also back in the gym. Basketball is back. We're going to talk to a head coach from the Mountain West next on Main Street Living. Welcome back to Main Street Living, Danielle Quincy. It may seem like we were just in the throes of March Madness, but college basketball is back and we're looking forward to a great season. Absolutely. And some of the action will be found right here on Your View. And we have UNLV Lady Rebels head coach Lindy LaRock here to tell us what to watch for this season on her third ranked team. Lindy, thanks so much for making some time for Main Street Living. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited to have you on. Uh, I know that you played at Stanford, so I know that you learned from the best when it came to coaching here. And I know that you were also uh, the second youngest ever Division One basketball coach when you were hired at your position. So I'm very excited to hear all of your thoughts here. Obviously, your team looking forward to an exciting season. Last year, they were picked to be ninth in the Mountain West, but finished second. This year, you're picked third. What does it mean to you and your team to start out with such high expectations? Well, we're really excited to, you know, kind of gain that respect and, you know, kind of the notoriety from our peers and, and you know, the people that we play against. Um, if anything, it might mean that we have a little bit more of a target on our back. Maybe we were under the radar last year, but I don't think that's going to be the case this year. So, you know, our external expectations are just aligning with our internal ones. You know, we have really high expectations for our team and how we want to play. Um, you know, and so being picked third, it, it's great, but it's not a predictor of the future by any means. So we have a lot of work to do, um, but we're just really excited to get going. All right. Well, Coach, I have to say, uh, clearly I missed the memo on the orange shirt day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> clearly I missed that. But I have to ask you, okay, you got a young team, some young players. Now, who should we watch for this season? Well, Quincy, this is Rebel Red, so okay. – yeah, I, I was. I, I didn't want to correct him, but I'm glad well, you did. Well, okay, uh, I'm struggling with colors right now. <laughs> That's all right. We forgive you. We forgive you. Um, but we, we have a lot of new faces on our team. We have five freshmen, three transfers, um, a young woman that sat out last year uh, for COVID and is back. So really, we have nine new players on our team. Um, and so I'd love to tell you to look out for all of them because uh, they're really talented young women. 
Um, we're just excited to kind of blend our, our personalities, our skills together and, and see what we can, you know, put together. Uh, some people that are popping off the page, especially a couple of our transfers. We've got a young woman named Kayla Rook. She played at Washington uh, the last four years. So she's a grad transfer, has four years of college experience um, and just a high IQ older player for some of our, our youth that we have. And she's been really uh, productive for us so far. Um, another transfer, Essence Booker. She's actually a Las Vegas native here. Um, she started up north at Reno and uh, went to Ball State last year. So we're just happy to be able to bring her home. But she'll be our point guard um, to start. And if you know anything about basketball, that's that's a huge role for us. So um, excited for sure about Kayla and Essence. But you know, I could I can you know be here all day and and talk you know, great things about all of them. So I, I'd say look out for all of them. Nice. Yeah, and I know you have good young talent too, and it's cool that you have so much local Las Vegas talent. I know you were born there, and I know uh, Desi Ray Young, I believe, also on your team as well. So it's cool that you guys are kind of keeping it local. You've really turned the team around since taking over as head coach last year. What are some of your keys to success? What can you share with us? Well, you know, kind of taking over a program, reinventing, you know, culture, starting fresh, that, that's that's a tough job in any profession. Um, but the pillars that we have for our program are for sure are – uh, energy and effort. You know, I, I ask them every day, did you give me great energy? Did you give me great effort? And and did you have a great attitude? And if we can do those every single day, we'll take the steps forward that we need and all of those kind of outcomes and, you know, the results will take care of themselves. We're, we're focused on our process and just improving each and every day. So that's, that's how we've done it so far. And we've had some success. So I'm not going to change it just yet, but energy, effort, our team plays really, really hard. Um, and when you do that, you give yourself a chance to win a lot of ball games. Yeah, yeah, and winning, winning is the emphasis that I'm sure that you guys are driving while you're building relationships between the players. But the most difficult thing, I believe, as a coach that you have to deal with is building chemistry. So how are you doing that and what activities you use? Well, you know, young people, there, there's a lot of stimulation out there these days. So we've tried to not see that as an extract, a distraction, but really encourage it. Um, you know, off the court, we've tried to do a lot of fun things of goat yoga and roller skating. We took them out to the baseball field and did batting practice. We went to the arcade two weeks ago. So, um, you know, I just am a firm believer that if they enjoy being around each other, have fun off the court, on the court, it'll just be another representation of how much they love each other and love being around each other. So um, we're seeing that play out and it's worked so far for us. Nice. It seems like you got like a nice little family going on over there. We know, again, you're a Las Vegas native and your father actually coached high school basketball for more than 30 years. So what's it like leading this program to success in your hometown? Well, being able to lead this program in general, it, it's it really is a dream come true for me. I've been a, a Rebel fan, you know, since I can remember my mom graduated from here. We went to Rebel games and since I was, you know, a tiny tot. So um, to be, you know, at in this position is such an honor and a privilege to represent our community, our town, um, you know, as the UNLV Lady Rebels head coach, it just, it just means the world to me. And I wanna do really well for this community because they deserve it. Um, and I'm thankful to have the family and the support that I've had. And, you know, my dad, I, I learned a lot from him along with a lot of other coaches and players. And so just their support and love, you know, it, it's just, it's really impactful to our success. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, for the viewers, um, it'd be cool for you all to know that you'll be able to catch some of the Lady Rebels games coming up right here on your view. But uh, what are you looking forward to in the next uh, few weeks as the season prepares? Well, I'm like so jazzed to have our games on the UVU channel because I think it might be the first time in our program history. And so to have our games, you know, streamed and, and on TV locally, yeah. um, where, wherever they're going to be, any, honestly, anywhere is great, but it, this is huge for our program. And so we're really excited about the games that we have coming up. You know, I think our first one on the year view is uh, November 13th against Montana State. Um, that's our first home game as well. So we're really excited about that. Um, we have some great non-conference competition. And so it's going to give us some really good tests before we get into the conference season um, after Christmas. But three non-conference games and then three conference games on, on the channel with you guys, it just – it, it's a program changer for us. So I, I just can't thank you enough for uh, billing, being willing to, to support us and everything that we're doing. No problem, coach. We love it. We love it so much. Make sure you do check it out on your view, the UNLV Rebels. Excited, excited to see your guys' season. 
thank you so much. I'm, it's just, you know, we're itching to get going. It's basketball season. The weather's changing, you know, get the hoodie on and, you know, come indoors and, and see some hoops or, or watch them on TV. That, that's okay, too. There you yeah, go. we love it all. Thanks so much, Coach. We appreciate you. Yeah, well, appreciate you guys having me. No problem. All right, Danielle, although I struggle with seeing the difference between red and orange, clearly. Yeah, <laughs> we'll work on it. <laughs> but I think we're being a little bit selfish. We're only talking sports. How about we pass the ball around to our furry friends up next? We're Aww. talking training tips and so much more after the commercial break. Stay right there. Welcome back into Main Street Living, guys. As more Americans are getting vaccinated and more and more offices are reopening, many of us are starting to spend a lot more time away from home. Yeah, this might be great news for us, but may not be so well received by our pets who have become accustomed <laughs> to having us around all the time, right, baby? <laughs> yeah, little Adeline. Well, Alyssa Rose with Legends Dog Training has some tips for ways to smooth the transition for you and your pet. Take a look at this. There were a lot of good things that were happening where maybe dogs just enjoyed spending more time with their families. Um, they might have gone on more walks. They might have gotten more playtime in the yard. Dogs are very social animals, so I think that it's going to be a harder adjustment for them. I think that they're also probably accustomed to going more places with people at this point, so there's going to be that disappointment factor when people are getting their things together and the dog realizes that they're not headed out the door with their, with their human. Signs of stress can be more obvious, so we can see excessive barking, destructive behavior, dogs that are urinating or defecating in the home, even if they were previously potty trained. One thing that I think is a great idea is to start feeding your dog out of a food toy. So it could be something like a, a Kong. Um, they come in different sizes, but you can stuff some meaty food inside of the Kong along with some of their dry food or some other treats. You can put it into the freezer. And if your dog just starts to get accustomed to eating out of a food toy each morning, that's very helpful because when you do start to go back to work, you can start to give them that food toy right before you're about to leave the house. I like to use some sound therapy. So I like to, YouTube has a lot of really great sounds like the sound of waves crashing on the beach or rain falling. And if you start to pair those sounds um, at first, maybe when your dog is sleeping at night, you can create an association where your dog learns that that um, to feel more rested and more relaxed when they're hearing those sounds. So if we start off playing them at night, then we can also start to incorporate those sounds into times where we are leaving the house and your dog might by association feel calmer. So nature therapy is something else that we can consider here. Um, I think that taking your dog out routinely to a nice quiet nature trail is a really good idea. Research has shown that it can have a real calming effect on dogs and it can help them better cope with stressful situations like when we do have to leave them alone for long stretches during the day. Wow, guys, I'm gonna try that that trick on myself, I think, about the anxiety. I'm gonna play some music for myself at night, and then when I'm stressed during the day, I'm just gonna put it on and see if it like makes me sleepy, because that's, that's a good human tip, too. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so funny, but yeah, the animals are going through a lot, too, so we gotta yeah. make sure we look out for them as well. You can find more helpful tips at legendsdogtraining.com. All right, well, let's dive deeper up next because we're getting into saving dogs and veterans. Don't go anywhere. Ooh. 
Welcome back in to Main Street Living, guys. Veterans Day is this week, and it's time to remember how much our service members have given to this country and to each of us who live here. Absolutely. The Shelter to Soldier organization in California is focused on helping veterans heal while also saving shelter dogs at the same time. Graham Bloom is here to tell us all about it, as well as Rich Barnes, a big supporter of the Shelter to Soldier mission. Welcome to Main Street Living. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Graham, I want to start with you. Give us some background about the Shelter to Soldier program. When was it founded and what was the goal? Yeah, Shelter to Soldier is nine years young um, and our mission is twofold, uh, saving lives two at a time. We're adopting dogs from local shelters and rescues and we're training them to be psychiatric service dogs for post 9-11 combat veterans in need. So the goal is really helping two-legged and four-legged uh, beings in need. Yeah, yeah. Um, how many dogs are in training, Grant? Currently, we have 29 dogs in training in the program. Okay. The most we've ever had. Oh, wow. wow. And what types of dogs are they? They are every type of dog. Um, so typically medium to large in size, um, ages one to two years old. Uh, and they, you know, they have this innate ability and, and desire to have a job. Um, we're seeking dogs and adopting dogs that uh, are often not necessarily ideal for a pet dog home, but more ideal for, for a working dog or a dog that's uh, got a higher purpose. So um, no breed specifics. We're fortunate that um, service animals and the guidelines that we operate under, they have no breed restrictions. So we have bully breeds, shepherd mixes, and you know who knows what's, but they've all got big hearts, big smiles, and the ability to, uh, to do the job. Oh, yeah. there are so many dogs who need homes. I'm so glad that you guys are doing this. And Rich, I want to go over to you. Why is the Barnes firm involved with Shelter to Soldier? Well, yeah, thank you. Um, we at the Barnes firm have a, a, a long and, and proud tradition of supporting both our active duty military and our, and our veterans. Uh, my dad and, and three of his brothers actually uh, fought in combat in World War II. Uh, one of them uh, tragically uh, was killed in the European theater. And my brother, Steve Barnes, who was the founder of the Barnes firm, uh, was for many years a major in the United States Marine Corps. Uh, he was a, a commander in a, a tank battalion in, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in uh, Desert Storm. Uh, and we're personal injury lawyers. We have uh, a keen understanding of the, the type of trauma and, and challenges that our returning veterans go through. Uh, and my brother, uh, being a, a Marine, felt that this program uh, would be a perfect fit uh, for us uh, to get involved with. And we've been doing it since last year. Uh, we are a sponsor uh, currently of two of these wonderful animals. And we're also big fans of uh, adopting uh, rescue dogs. And th this, this program really presents a win-win, frankly, because you've got these beautiful, intelligent, highly trained animals, thanks to Graham and his crew, and they're paired with these veterans in need, and it, amazing things happen. We're, we're go really glad to be part of it. Yeah, that's got to be that's got to be so awesome, especially for you guys over there, Graham, um, that you have a good partner, a good sponsor like that. Um, how many veterans are currently enrolled and uh, is, there, is there a waiting list? Yeah, we have uh, about 16 active students right now. Um, and then those that are waiting to begin their process that are approved. Um, so that is part of your wait list. And then those that are applying, uh, you know, we're getting two to three applicants a day, you know, six, seven wow. days a week. So there's a huge need, um, unfortunately, but we're glad that we could be here to support and serve uh, and answer the call. And yeah, you know, having partners and sponsors like the Barnes Firm makes all the difference. You know, they're helping us save lives two at a time and, and we can't do it without them. So incredibly nice. grateful and thankful for the opportunity to do what we do. Yeah. Now, Graham, are there specific shelters you work with or can any shelter get involved? We have specific rescue partners, but we're always open to growing uh, additional partnerships. Um, and, you know, those are just forged by either them reaching out to us and learning about our program or us reaching out to them. But, you know, wherever there's dogs that are in need of a home um, that fit our criteria and ultimately pass their evaluations, uh, that's where we're going to adopt from. And we've adopted from all over uh, California. Um, 
and you know we're just fortunate to to have awesome partners that reach out to us and proactively recognize these potential skill sets and abilities in dogs and, and ask us to come meet dogs often and when that doesn't happen then we just go out and go dog shopping you know we go shelter to soldier uh, sorry shelter to sh shelter and we look through <laughs> uh, each of the runs and, and just go dog shopping yeah, it's always crazy. You try to say that multiple times. You just yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, That's so true. Rich, um, going back to you and the sponsorship, how many of these pairings has the Barnes firm sponsored? Well, uh, since last year, we have sponsored uh, uh, two beautiful dogs that uh, are currently with uh, veterans. Uh, we have one in the Los Angeles area where we have a uh, uh, an office, and we also have one in, in San Diego uh, where we have an office. And we are also uh, sponsoring uh, a dog that's in training uh, currently. And and when that dog is, is good to go, uh, that, that beautiful animal will be paired with a, a, a worthy veteran uh, in the Bay Area. Nice. Oh, nice. and I assume these special dogs have names. And how do you come up with the names? Well, that's a great question. Uh, the, the two that are currently uh, in, in service that we're sponsoring, uh, one is named Barney uh, and the other is named Stevie. And I'm, I'm so honored that uh, those names were, were given in, in memory and honor of my, my late brother, Steve Barnes, who passed last year, oh. uh, who uh, was uh, instrumental in getting the, the firm involved. Uh, the, 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 new, the new dog, the one that will be in the Bay Area, is not yet named. As a matter of fact, we, uh, there, there's, a, there's a contest being sponsored uh, to name that, that dog. Uh, and folks that would be interested uh, can can check uh, our social media in the program social media to find out how they could suggest a name. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic. A great way to do that. Yeah, yeah. And you got to watch out because people just come up with all types of names and you have <laughs> to decide. I don't know about that one. So good luck with that. Uh, and, you know, and Graham, how do veterans like myself find you and um, and find out how to apply? Yeah, most of the veterans that coming uh, that are coming to us are referred by um, their provider team, uh, mental health team, case manager, caseworker, uh, therapist, etc. Uh, a lot of them are referred by the VA um, over to us, and then in other times, friends, family referrals of past graduates, fellow veterans, um, or just finding us online. And the best way is to go to shelter2soldier.org and click the apply button. Uh, it's a fully confidential application process that goes to our Department of Veteran Services and is reviewed by our veteran advocate, who's not only uh, a veteran himself, a combat veteran himself, but he also is a recipient of one of our dogs. So you know, it's an understanding, listening ear, uh, a compassionate and empathetic team, and we're here to serve. And we encourage veterans to definitely reach out. Uh, if we're not a fit, we'll steer you in the right direction to get the help that you need. Hopefully. Thank you both so much. You're doing amazing work and we appreciate you joining us today right here on Main Street Living. Thank well, you. All right, Cheryl, it sounded like a rescue was going on right as we were finishing up there, right? <laughs> well, oh. up next, <laughs> well, you know, up next it's time for us to get a little creative with an incredible art form. So stick around and see what we are talking about. Stay right there. Hey guys, welcome back to Main Street Living. Now, uh, uh, ladies, for some people, like whether it's a comic or an artiste, uh, art is more than just a hobby. It's like this is the truest part of who they are. Absolutely. And Hank Robinson is one of those people who decided almost a decade ago to put his incredible engraving talents to work, creating unique masterpieces and honoring veterans. Let's take a look. So Hank Robinson is an engraver, a father, and all around just badass. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a, a Dremel engraver, I'm a multi-material engraver. So I do engravings in metal, wood, glass, plastics, literally anything I can get my Dremel on. Kind of known for doing out of the box kind of projects, not necessarily just flat pieces of metal. You know, I'm looking for 
the things that have never been done before. I'm looking to do the shock and awe moments. And if I don't think I can do something, that's just gonna make me wanna do it even more. So Handrow Studios came about in 2012. I love it so much. I just, I enjoyed being in the garage engraving things more than the actual job that I had, which was welding at the time. I decided one day that this is what I wanted to pursue. This is what I wanted to accomplish in life. And I gave up everything and just started engraving full time. I create anything and everything. I'm really known for, in the automotive world, for different aftermarket parts, doing full body engravings on cars and trucks. Um, I do a lot of instruments. We do Yeti cups, business signs. It can, literally can be anything and everything. So my, my favorite things to engrave actually are memorial pieces, but I just really feel a sense of accomplishment when I can give, you know, a family that's already gone through so much, I can give them something to remember their son or daughter or their mother, kind of, you know, obviously whoever it is, um, kind of give them the forever lasting peace that they're going to hold on to. Like, it just means a lot to me. Anything that I do with military, you know, obviously I gave 10 years of my life to that. And I've, you know, we've bled and been to war with you know what I mean, brothers of mine, and we've also lost guys too, so I definitely can relate on the emotional factor, and I know that what I'm doing for those memorials means so much more than just engraving a piece of metal. You see the happiness in their eyes, but you also see the sadness as well, and I think it's, a, it's an awesome thing that, you know, art can do that, you know, change your emotions like that. If you have it, not even necessarily with engraving, but if you have some sort of creative thought in your mind process somehow, someday, act on it. It feels so gratifying to actually do something with your own two hands. I mean, do stuff with your kids. I mean, that's the only thing I could really say. It may not be engraving, it may not be painting, but just get up and do something out of the box that doesn't involve your two thumbs and a cell phone. It's, it's an awesome world we live out. Wow, Cheryl Danielle, I don't know if you caught the uh, quote that he had in there, but it's really inspiring. If you have a creative thought, act on it. It's truly Yes, gratifying. follow your passion. Yeah. yeah, his work is so moving, and you can see more of Hank Robinson's work at hanrowstudios.com. A lot more coming up on Main Street Living. In fact, you're going to see opera like you've probably never witnessed before. Wait till you see this. Hey guys, welcome back to Main Street Living. As you ladies can see, I'm smiling from ear to ear. I'm back out there performing on cruise ships again. I mean, from sporting events to live theater productions, performances of all kinds are coming back across the country. Yes, yeah, so excited about this. And here to tell us about a unique project from the Arizona Opera is President and General Director Joseph Spector. Welcome to Main Street Living. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks so much. It's great to be with you. So let's start with this wonderful project that was supposed to be performed in the theater last year, but of course, due to the pandemic, it was turned into a film. We have a trailer. Let's take a look. Fantastic.
wow. Okay. That was really intense. Not what I was expecting. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not your parents' opera performance, if you will. A little bit spicier, I think. <laughs> I think it would be amazing to see in a live theater performance, but, I, but it's even cooler in this format, obviously. So what is the backstory of how it became a feature length film? Well, first of all, let me say th thank you for those kind words, and it's wonderful to be with you today. Uh, the Copper Queen uh, was a project uh, that originally came to Arizona Opera as an idea back in the 2014-15 season as part of a commissioning competition that was conducted by Arizona Opera in collaboration with a wonderful group called Arizona Spark, which was uh, which was and is a devoted group of opera patrons that are interested in finding that, uh, to use your word, spiciness of yes. uh, not just traditional opera, but how can we nurture and, and share this art form with another generation. Over the subsequent about six years, um, the piece was uh, workshopped and eventually commissioned for the stage. It was supposed to open our fall season in 2020, in the 2020-21 season. And of course, because of the pandemic, we had to rethink all sorts of things. Mm. And because we were so committed to this project, this opera um, uh, uh, composed by Clint Borzoni with libretto by John De Los Santos, we said, we're not going to miss the opportunity to produce this work, to bring people together through art that uh, will feel very resonant and very now. Uh, mm. And we thankfully had incredible leadership in the form of our director, Crystal Manich, uh, who was on board for the stage production in partnership with Manly Films, our film producing partner. And we said, you know what? We're gonna make this project happen willy nilly. We're gonna take the risk of a, of a big um, ambitious effort to create art that's resonant in Arizona, that tells a story that will connect with people no matter where they are in the whole world. And we're just going to make it happen. And so in, in May of 2021, we were finally able to film a project that had been in the works at that point, really for six years and, uh, and then bring it to the world. Incredible. And how yeah. can people view it now? Well, they can watch it on AZ Opera, uh, Arizona Opera on Demand, on demand.azopera.org. Uh, and actually, we just found out, I think yesterday, that Harkins Theaters, where we've been screen screening in both Scottsdale and Tucson, have extended our run through this weekend. So you can oh. see it at Harkins Scottsdale 101, as well as at the Tucson Spectrum uh, for, for our opera family in Tucson. Well, I'm sure people are clamoring to go see Copper Queen. Uh, what are some of the other performances that audiences can look forward to this season? Uh, thank you for asking. It's our 50th anniversary season. And you know, to say that we're ecstatic about being able to bring people back together in the theater uh, following mm -hmm. the launch of the Copper Queen, it's, uh, it's an understatement. So we'll be in the Herberger Theater Center and the Temple of Music and Art in Phoenix and Tucson, respectively, for the Mariachi Opera. El Milagro del Recuerdo, uh, that is a regional premiere uh, that we that we put together with Houston Grand Opera and San Diego Opera. Then in the Phoenix Symphony Hall and Tucson Music Hall in January and February for Bizet's Carmen, one of the most beloved pieces in the repertoire. Uh, then in March for Sondheim's A Little Night Music and closing the season with a new production of Mozart's Così Fan Tutte. And on top of all of that, we have wonderful K-12 through and education uh, programs of, uh, across the state, community engagement programs. There's a way for everyone to get involved through this art form, and most importantly, to be to be connected through uh, through culture, which I think is what uh, so much of us uh, need right now is to to feel a human connection. Oh Cheryl and I have to make a trip. Yes, <laughs> so we've all been missing the human connection, the live performances, and I know you're doing everything to keep everybody there safe. Once again, that website people can go to to learn more azopera.org and you can find us on social media facebook twitter instagram at azopera all right well Thanks thank you so, so much. much thank you wow cheryl well, i'm excited for some arts but coming up looking for a new career we might just have the rig for you i mean the gig <laughs>
guys, welcome back to Main Street Living. Now, Danielle, Cheryl, if you thought that going back to the office would leave you uninspired, then it may be time for a career change. Yeah, I know there are a lot of people thinking about that right now, but get this, truck drivers are in huge demand and Eagle KMC Transportation in Tucson, Arizona can put you on the open road with a new career and a big truck in just a few weeks. Check this out. Why Eagle? is because they the shirt says welcome home to family it is family they will give you every opportunity every help you need to succeed in this industry eagle is a great company like i enjoy everyone here they are willing to help you progress further from who you are they're a very family oriented company and that they will have your back if you need some home time you need to take a long period of time they're there for you eagle kmc is family operate a company in Tucson, Arizona. We also have a satellite yard in Phoenix. Eagle has the EST program. The EST program is an employer-sponsored training program. Basically, no cost to the student. It's a quick turnaround to get guaranteed employment. So you do sign the nine-month pledge and hopefully stay for your nine months. After that, you're free to go, free to stay. We'd like you to stay. So it makes us a little different than most companies where you're paying a tuition. A student can typically finish the program in two to three weeks, then come to work for Eagle, but it really does depend on the student, has to be dedicated and put a lot of hard work into it. CDL schools are not cheap. You're getting loans for about maybe like five to six thousand dollars just for, for a three to a month course. I was just passing through. They didn't even look at other, other places. It was just a free CDL. I know CDL costs money. So when I saw the sign when I was passing through Eagle, I went for it. I've been in some different industries. I've been an aviation mechanic for 13 years, but I tore my ACL in half. I couldn't come back doing the heavy loads. But I'm not a desk kind of job person. I like to be moving and Trucking just seemed like the next logical step. I was able to get a new career in a short amount of time with, and be able to make a decent living. And with Eagle, that came true. The trucking industry right now is in high demand due to the driver shortage. Basically, most new drivers make $55,000 their first year. Um, we do have availability of different home time options. Also, you get to travel, see the United States for free and get paid for it. Um, has great opportunities for people to take their home time wherever they want to take their home time. They don't have to come to Tucson. So if they have family, the family can fly to where they want to go and the driver can get paid to where they want to go. So if you've been looking for a career change, we certainly have one for you. So come on down to Eagle Transportation, Tucson, Arizona, and give us a try. Take a look at what we have to offer, and we really appreciate seeing you. All right, guys, I gotta say that's pretty cool. I've driven a big rig before. I got to do it for an assignment Cheryl. one time. <laughs> yes, no joke. It was a lot of fun. The best part was pulling the horn, you know? <laughs> yeah, love doing that, You could have started a campaign. Keep Cheryl off our streets in a oh, big rig. Come on. I'm a good driver. I'm a good well, driver. yeah, we think so too. Right. Now, <laughs> you can find more about the opportunities in commercial driving at eagletucson.com. <laughs> and straight ahead, we have more Main Street Living. Welcome back into Main Street Living. Quincy, before we go, if we didn't say it, we got to say it one more time. Thank you so much for your service and all of our veterans. Oh, no yes. problem. Yes, Quincy, we appreciate it. We know it's a sacrifice. And thanks to all of you and your family members who have served as well. That's right. Shout out to all the veterans and also shout out to all you viewers. You can always catch our other episodes, including this one on our Cox Contour app. Yes, and brand new episodes of Main Street Living right here Mondays at 9 p.m. local time. So make sure you join us next time as we take a stroll down Main Street.